obtain the purchaser's signature. DocuSign. 41% drop. Why so large a signature, my friend? When was the last time that you signed a document? I mean, like, actually signed something with a pen and paper? Well, unless you're signing autographs or, I don't know, maybe you have an affinity for paper checks, there's a good chance that it's been a while. With the advent of e-signature technology, signing and authenticating a document has now become incredibly easy. From employee onboarding and insurance claims to customer forms and non-disclosure agreements, the use cases for document authorization are many and varied. Over the past couple of years, the e-signature market has grown by leaps and bounds. By 2027, the global e-signature market as a whole is expected to reach $20.4 billion. But one company in particular seems to have made quite the impression. DocuSign. DocuSign's growth exploded in 2020 and posted subscription revenue of $410 million. And with the shift to remote work, it's no wonder that the brand has seen so much success. But after reaching a share price of $310 in September of 2021, its stock plummeted to $60 in June of this year, causing CEO Dan Springer to resign. So how did DocuSign get to such a high peak in the first place? What were the causes of its downfall? What SaaS lessons can you take from these successes and these failures? We'll get into all of that soon, but first, let's get some background info. I'm Ben Hillman, and this is Verticals. An electronic signature, or e-signature for short, is defined as symbols or other data in digital form attached to an electronically transmitted document. Basically, an e-signature can take several forms, a person's name typed out, an uploaded image of the individual's signature in cursive, or a signature drawn on the screen of a tablet or a smartphone. Long ago, signatures came in the form of stamps or other different symbols. It was more of like a seal on a contract, sometimes quite literally. But in the 1800s, the evolution of signatures took an interesting twist. On May 24th, 1844, a man crafted a message in the Senate wing of the U.S. Capitol. The message said, What hath God wrought? Moments later, an identical message appeared in Baltimore, Maryland. Was this the first text message? Not exactly. Those in attendance had just witnessed the first telegram. The man who sent this message was Samuel Morse. Over the next few decades, Morse code was used to communicate across great distances. In some instances, it was even used to sign and authenticate documents. Then in 1869, a landmark ruling by the New Hampshire Supreme Court confirmed such contracts as enforceable. This was, in many ways, the earliest validation of electronic signatures. However, it would take more than 100 years for the idea of e-signatures to truly pick up pace more broadly within society. In the 1980s, signed documents sent by fax were considered valid and enforceable, so much so that government entities and courts started to recognize and use them. In 2000, the US government gave the adoption of e-signatures a massive boost, the e-sign act. Under this act, electronic signatures were given legal equivalents to handwritten ones. Businesses definitely took note, and just around the corner lurked what would soon be a major player. Over the next couple of decades, DocuSign paved the way for the e-signature space. An early deal in 2005 with ZipLogix resulted in a massive customer base within the real estate space. In 2010, it added support for iPhone and iPad authentication. Additionally, it partnered with Box.com, which meant DocuSign would now play a prominent part throughout the entire collaboration process. All right. In July of 2012, DocuSign boasted that approximately 90% of Fortune 500 companies had signed up. These key moves meant that DocuSign was now a stalwart of the e-signature space. In 2018, DocuSign IPO'd with a single share going for $29, and they put all 21 million shares up for sale which ultimately raked in $629.3 million. It seemed like DocuSign has always been destined for greatness. But if they were to ever fall, which company would be primed to pounce on its lucrative market? EchoSign started operations in late 2005. Like DocuSign before it, EchoSign benefited from streamlining legacy processes and reducing clutter. They even began with a freemium plan for folks who needed to manage 20 documents or less. This tactic helped boost EchoSign to more than 2.5 million users by 2011. Not too shabby. That is until you look at DocuSign's 13 million users in comparison. EchoSign was going to need a Hail Mary if they were going to compete. In July 2011, they got just that. EchoSign was acquired by Adobe. As we speak, Adobe Sign is a full-fledged e-signature and digital signing software. With Adobe's large technical war chest at EchoSign's disposal, DocuSign needed to adapt quickly to stay competitive. So what were some of the steps that ultimately led to DocuSign's success? There are a multitude of reasons that DocuSign succeeded. The first of which started early on in the company's existence. The tactic they used was referral marketing. 
As far back as 2009, DocuSign had a referral program whereby they would send a $20 gift card to customers who managed to get another person to subscribe to DocuSign. Reportedly 1,300 referrals poured in. And while that may seem like a lot to pay in Visa gift cards, consider this. At the time, their professional plan cost $15. If each of those customers stuck around for at least two months, DocuSign is more than breaking even. Folks who end up referring others are typically those who love the product in the first place. And who better to sell your product than happy customers? Another area where DocuSign succeeded was focusing on a single industry in which to make its mark. That industry was real estate. In real estate, there are several paper forms required, including loan applications, property inquiry forms, and house seller forms. DocuSign was a perfect fit for this need. To make things better, in 2010, the National Association of Realtors released DocuSign Realtor Edition. It was an exclusive offering dedicated entirely to real estate agents. At the time, the NAR represented 1.2 million members across residential and commercial real estate industries. This was a massive client base from which DocuSign was able to grow. A final area that DocuSign succeeded was in its partnership with other collaboration tools. By joining with Salesforce, PayPal, and Google Drive, DocuSign is making it easier for folks to get work done. If you already use a product like Salesforce, it's likely that you'll trust the products that Salesforce partners with. So with all of these building blocks towards success, why did DocuSign lose 60% of its value as well as its CEO, Dan Springer? Well, in 2020, the SaaS company saw improved growth as demand for e-signatures grew. Costly paper stock and needing to shift towards a remote working environment drew companies to search for virtual solutions. While it was beneficial in the short term, DocuSign's growth cannot be exponential forever. As businesses opened back up and workers moved back to the office, platform consumption declined, especially as renewals came up. DocuSign isn't underwater by any means. In fact, it has been growing. It just hasn't been growing as much as projected. Just recently, Dropbox and HelloSign partnered up. Dropbox, an innovator in its own space, boasts over 500 million users. While adoption of the product isn't guaranteed to be automatic, it puts HelloSign in a great position to acquire new users. By combining their powers, HelloSign and Dropbox have powerful ammunition in the e-signature war. Adobe, as mentioned before, is a behemoth in its own right. Not too long ago, Adobe announced that government agencies in all 50 US states would start using its products. And in March of 2021, the company rolled out a new suite of tools dedicated to small businesses. Can DocuSign remain afloat in such trying times? It's possible, but there needs to be concise, well-calculated steps made along the way. One thing stands out above all else. E-signatures are incredibly important to folks running SaaS businesses. Not only does this technology save time, but it also saves on paper costs and provides top-notch security. In many ways, it takes business to a whole new level of efficiency and flexibility. The e-signature industry isn't without its fair share of challenges. Issues of verification, legality, and trust continue to cause headaches among key industry players. Now more than ever, companies in the e-signature space need to stay true to customer-centric practices or risk a biblical customer exodus. It's clear that the e-signature race is more open than it has ever been in the past. More and more companies in the e-signature realm are doing everything possible to get closer to the customer, meaning that this race is really anyone's to win. Who will be the first to finish line? Let me know in the comments down below. From Paddle, I'm Ben Hillman, and I'll see you next time.